no, 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 no. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Carol. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new to this channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. And if you haven't done so just yet, please like and subscribe. So today I'm going to be doing a straight set, straight stiletto. And this tips, the creations, I got, I did this set on my girlfriend for her birthday last week, but we didn't have the straight tips. And so she bought some and gifted them to me. Great. When I opened my mystery box, I ordered a mystery box, a medium and a small, and to my delight, oh, before I tell you about the mystery box, I wanted to do this straight set on myself because my husband and I are going on vacation to New Orleans and I don't usually get to wear extremely long stilettos. So I've been following someone online. So this is uh, the colors that we'll be using. I'm just showing you here my swatches and what I had in mind for the colors. This is a gray I made out of um, Claire and black. So Entourage Nail Gallery Claire and Not Polished Black. Everything else would be a Not Polished lineup. All right. So we have a little bit of Berry Irresistible, Royal at Midnight Black, and of course the gray color that I mixed, that one. Yeah. So I'm following this person's youtube page they're doing some really fantastic work and i decided i wanted to do my stilettos i didn't have the tips so my girlfriend bought them for her birthday and she gifted me the box well i wasn't sure if they were the right size of stilettos so i was about to order some from the person's website Right here, I'm just pushing back my cuticles because I am trying to, because of the length of these nails and how long I want to wear them for, I'm making them a little bit more permanent. So I'm choosing to actually, uh, I'm choosing to actually buff the surface and stuff like that when I usually do the pop off method. Okay. So, um, where was I? So I was about to order the nails from the person's website. And would you believe, guys, my credit card would not work. So because of all the securities I have on it, every time I try to charge it, it will bounce it off to security and ask me if I was trying to use a card. I would say yes. I will go back on and try to use it again. The time that I needed to use it in would have expired and I have to try again. So by the third time, I said to myself, look, if if the security keeps alerting and I can't charge the card, I'm just not going to buy these nails. So lo and behold, I tried it again. The security kicked off. I said, you know what? Fine. I'm not buying them. The next day, I opened my small and medium mystery box and each one of them had straight stilettos so it was the force of nature keeping me from being able to order those so that's where we have the tips coming in so any event here i am about to buff the surface of my nails to remove the surface shine and i am running my e-file at 2000 rpms and i am using an arbor band uh, 80 grit abba band and i am gently going around the cuticle paying attention to the side walls that i remove all the surface shine and my nails has a little bit more of a edge to it a free edge to it because my hypernicium grows really long underneath my nails so i couldn't cut the nails down any further than the free edge that you've seen on it. I can't go any further. I would be bleeding if I cut the hyponychium. So, yeah, so I'm just removing the surface oils. And guys, the e-file is running so slow that if I push down on the nail at all, on the on the e-file at all, it would stop the rotations 
And that's how gently you want to be with your buffing of the surface. And I'm just gently gliding over the surface of my nail. And I have been healing my nails by not putting the, not buffing it. Because I change mine out. I do a lot of videos and I change them out a lot. So they were pretty healthy on the bottom. But still, I did not want to file a lot. And I am being very gentle and just surface buffing. And then I'm going to rotate, move from my dominant hand to the non-dominant. And then we're going to get into some non-dominant hand right here, buffing the surface. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I do run my e-file both on forward and reverse. And at some point, I'm going to stop long enough. I'm not sure if I actually... See the, the e-file bumps off my finger? That's because I'm running it on forward right here. And maybe I cut it out when I... It's probably edited out, but I would normally stop and change the rotation to reverse because it's more comfortable for me running the e-file on reverse at this point in the game. I can do it forward, but I prefer to do it on reverse when I'm using the non-dominant hand. This video is going to run a little bit longer than any other video that I've ever put up. But we were doing a brand new shape, brand new length, brand new design on the nail. So it really, it literally took me some time to get that set done. And I still had to leave some, I chose to edit some areas of the video out. And y'all know why I'm off. I'm going off. My hands are going. My cinematography is awful, guys. So I'm going to give my nails a nice little buff to get rid of the surface dust. And then I am going to come in with my nut polish universal tip, the long straight coffin stiletto nails. You can get the long and you can get stiletto and coffin out of these tips. And you can get coffin by cutting the tip off and filing it straight across. Today I'm choosing to keep them stilettos. And what I'm doing here right now is I'm pre-selecting the tips to my nails because if I took them out of the container and put them on my finger, when they start getting long, I would be having some problems picking them up with the tips on. So I'm choosing to pre-select them first. 
And when I pre-select using tips that I've never used before, I usually start with a tip that is obviously larger than my nail and keep sizing it down until I get to the point where I'm comfortable that I selected the absolutely perfect tip for the nail that will fit sidewall to sidewall. And I don't assume because it fit the right hand that it would fit the left. So I'm literally trying them on each nail. And this is a process that I don't rush because sometimes when you size and tips to your own hands, if you notice when I size them to my left hand, I, I turn my hand in facing me. And then when I size the right hand, my hands are facing away from me. So sometimes when you like, you see that way it's facing away from me. Sometimes when you size the hand that is away from you, you can have a little bit of an issue seeing whether or not the sidewall fits sidewall to sidewall. So I usually try the left hand first and it will give me a pretty decent idea of whether or not I should go up and down on the other side. So I know which tip I'm selecting for the other side. Okay, so now that we finished fooling around with those, we will commence to using some KDS glue and we would be fitting them to my fingers. And as I put each one of them down, I am going to look to make sure that after I stick it down, I'm going to turn my hands around after about three seconds to look at it to make sure it's straight. Looks pretty straight to me. Do the same thing. I'm, my hands is towards me, facing towards me. I put the tip down. And guys, these tips were super lightweight and thin that I am actually wearing the tip and my nails does not feel heavy. I'm just going to let you watch me put the size the tips on. I can already tell I'm going to be a diva. I, I was feeling those tips from the time I was putting them down. Mm -hmm. I'm already feeling them. And I have to say, by the time I'm doing this voiceover, this is today's Monday. So I did them yesterday. I am absolutely, totally enjoying my ability to wear some long nails. We go on vacation on Friday. We head out to New Orleans. And so it's a little bit early for me having them on. But I do have an event in my salon on Thursday. And I wanted to have a certain look for it.
Yes, indeed, guys. I'm already feeling myself. Nicely done. Straight on. Checking them out, making sure they look good. Yeah, when you look in a way, you have to be really good at having the eye for it to make sure that you are putting the tips down straight. So I'm going to give it a quick little inspection, make sure that I am seeing what I want to see. I'm also going to be blending the tips into the natural nail. So right with the enhancement and my nail come together. I am going to be blending them right here like so. Guys, if you hear long pauses, this video is going to go on. And I'm going to be working in real time on certain parts of the video. So if I don't say anything, I'm just giving you advanced warning. It's just a look and learn opportunity. I do have my cranberry juice here next to me, but really... Sometimes there are certain, once I give the explanation of what it is I'm doing, really there's nothing to say about it other than for you to just look. Okay, so enjoy. Okay, and that was done at 4,000 RPMs. Little dust off. So I'm changing the bit out here for a cuticle bit and I'm gonna go in and clean up the cuticle, the cuticles, because when I was looking at one of my other videos, I noticed that I had some really crappy looking cuticles. So on this go round, yes, I'm just cleaning up that dry crustacean of a cuticle. Mm, mm, mm. Very satisfying though to see that it's cleaning up what would make my nails look like. Oh, the nails look great, but girl, you got to do something about those cuticles. So <clears throat> while this cuticle cleaning job is going to go on for a second, got to tell you guys. So yesterday I did a monstrosity of a unboxing. I was late in ordering my medium and small box. Of course, I wanted an extra large one by the time I saw what everybody got in theirs. But I was lazy, never really into the mystery box thing. And I'm up late one night watching everybody open their mystery boxes. And I was like, I want to open one. So I got on their website and they still have the small and the medium. And I was like, eh. I don't have the stuff that is in there. I think I got some extra glosset. I got an extra glosset. I'm at it. And what else did I get some of? Anyways, very few things I had. I didn't have them before. I mean, I had before. And I got the gel liners and stuff. Really excited about it. But guys, I must have missed opening a box 101. 
That box gave me hell to figure out how to open it. So I had to end up ripping open the box. And now that the box is on the deep side, I can't tell if I got to the bottom. So my girl Latina was like, Carol, you were digging in that box like there was no bottom. As far as I'm concerned, the, bottom, the box went all the way to China. Okay. But it was so funny. When you when the box is on the side, you don't know. I guess if you open it on the flat side like you were supposed to, you will be able to see from the surface all the stuff that was in there. But it was funny as hell. I had to rip that box like the Tasmanian devil to get to the stuff on the inside. So if you want to be truly entertained, go ahead and look up me, um, Carol unboxing her small and medium mystery box. It was outright hilarious. Okay, and as I've said before in my other videos, I'm not here to be perfect. I'm here to post my vulnerabilities and we're going to all learn together that life is just not perfect. And it was fun and I was truly excited for every single item that came out. So next year, I'm definitely ordering mystery boxes. All right, Carol, what are we doing now? All right, so I'm about to use my Triple Bond X by Not Polish. And if you haven't figured it out just yet, this is going to be like a 95% not polish video. Okay. I am not sponsored by not polish. I just like their stuff. And my product line is, is very conservative and is growing, but doesn't have a whole lot of pigmented powders. So they are my go-to for the stuff that I don't have in my product line. So, it does not say that on the container. Matter of fact, it says the direction says apply to natural nail before any nail enhancement services. Well, or service. And this is not polished acid free primer triple bond X for acrylic and UV gels. So, any event that the primer does not have a dehydrator, I always apply twice. It does not say that. I repeat, the manufacturer does not say that on the bottle. I do that because when I first started doing it, we had a dehydrator and a primer. I'm a little bit old school. I like the... Who does that? Protein Bond by Young Nails. The manufacturer suggests that you do it twice. This one doesn't say that, but I'm in that habit of doing it twice, so I do it twice if it doesn't have a dehydrator. Of course, you don't have to do it that way, but I do, so you're going to see me doing it. This is a second go round, so I do it the way I like. You do it the way you like, as long as at the end of the day, you get the intended results, okay? So just in case anybody was wondering why I did it twice, us old school nail techs, we had hydrators and dehydrators and primers, and so that's what I did. Okay, so I'm giving it a second to dry. And now in comes the Nut Polish Diamond Dappin Dish. And of course, we will be using some Nut Polish EMA Monomer. So I'm just filling up the reservoir with as much product as I need to accomplish the job. I will be refilling because these are some long nails and we will be consuming a little bit more product than normal. So here we go with my nut polish Kalinsky brush in a size 12. And I'm just putting my line up where I need it. And today we will be using Antarash Nail Gallery Mix which is a combination of the 
clear and pink pander of course i have my handy dandy homemade hand rest. i love that thing and i am going to put a layer of clear down simply because one i want to protect my prep work as well as we will be using pigmented powder which includes purple and blacks and i really did not want to stain my natural nail with the highly pigmented powders so we're going to make sure that we put a layer of clear down eliminating the chances of staining my natural nail Small beads of clay for the sole purpose of staining, preventing staining, as well as protecting my prep work. And I'm gonna do this to all 10 nails. I also believe that putting down a clear layer also helps the pigmented powders to stick to the nail better. It's my personal thing. It works that way for me. And I'm just going to repeat the process on the right hand as well. I'm being careful not to flood the sidewalls and the cuticle even at this point. And the more you pay attention to that, it's the less work you'll be doing around those areas when it comes time to work on those areas. Link in the description box, I would leave the website where you can find some of these products. When I'm doing work with clear tips, especially if I'm going to be doing work where the clear tips will be shown, I like uh, to make the powder. I have clear and mix, and like I said, the mix is 50% clear, 50% pink panda. It just gives you the softest shade of pink that you would see on your natural nail. For, you know, if ever you have a nail set that you just really want to make it look natural, this is it. Okay, so now that I have all 10 nails prepped, and for most people, their prep stops at putting on the dehydrator and the uh, primer, this is when my prep work actually stops. So I'm out of the prep phase, and I'm moving into actually laying the acrylic phase. 
I promise you guys, when you're doing clients during the daytime, those folks will be wanting to scratch their nose and go to the restroom after you prep their hands. They literally cannot do anything until after I finish that thin layer of clear. I feel confident that whatever they do, stick your hands in your pocketbook, you got some chocolate on your finger, whatever. I don't have to prep the work a second time. So as you guys can see, I am applying what I believe is the very irresistible, beautiful. I didn't want this nail to be white. I just wanted a little bit of color on this particular finger. And instead of using white, I wanted something so simple, so blushed with color. So very irresistible was my choice because I will be using black and purple and it would have been what I would call a transition shade. So just above the enhancement with the enhancement and the natural nail meat, I applied my first bead, I pat it down, I applied a second bead, and now I'm putting a third bead closer to the cuticle, and I am pulling that forward, starting from the corners, and then I will do it in the middle, and I pull it without removing too much product. So I'm pulling from the middle part of the bead when I hit the center without dragging all the product forward. Right, I wanna have a little bit of an apex. And you see that little PS shape that the nail has? That is what I'm looking for. And that's the reason why when you put the powder down right where the nail enhancement meets, and your natural nail, it's almost like, how do I describe that? Finding your waistline. You know, your waist has that, well, some of us, I don't have that type of waist anymore. Where the waist comes in smaller than your upper and lower body. That's what I'm looking for. And now that I did that, I'm, I'm going to turn up my finger around, make sure that my sidewalls and the cuticles are clean. And I am also going to put a reverse bead in, a bead in and pull it back reverse action, blending that bead in and building up the thickness in the middle of the nail, tapering off to the front to the very tip. Guys, I love that little jar. It's a, something I found at a dollar store for a dollar. It's a beer mug. And when you lay it on the side, it doesn't move, right? Like it doesn't slide around the table. Like if it was just a cylinder without that arm, it would just slide around the table. So, of course, I'm a nail tech and we do bling all day long and I blinged it out. Moving right along, I am going to apply some Berry Irresistible again. One bead right in the middle, pulling it forward. Pulling it forward, making sure that my cuticle and this, well, we're not in the cuticle area yet. The side walls is not flooded. That color was just everything to me. I can see in the Easter time, how this is gonna this can has so much potential for being a soft color other than the pastels that we use around Easter time. How beautiful very irresistible can be if you're creative enough. Lovely. Mm -hmm. 
I'm picking up one bead, put it in a cuticle. I am manipulating it, finessing it into the cuticle area, nice and smooth, and then pulling it down after I get it tucked, tucked in nice and snug into the areas that I want it to. I think cuticles can be so sexy if you get them done right. Guys, I have been waiting all year long to wear. Y'all know if I don't go off script, right? Off scene where you can't see what I'm doing. This would not be my video. And and you got to imagine how much of that I cut out. But I still got enough content to fill this video. But guys, pray for me. I'm getting better though. And this is when I realized I messed up. That nail was supposed to be like a tan, not a tan, the gray color. But all, all, nonetheless, I am enjoying these bad boys. And I don't know, they're pretty long. But I was surprised as how comfortable they are and how much I can still function with nails this long. Guys, on Thursday morning, I have two clients that I'm working on and my assistant is going to be there with me because these bad boys are not practical for shampooing anybody's hair. However, it's the only time I would have had to do them before I leave for New Orleans. And so, yeah, I wanted to enjoy some long nails. Alrighty, so here it is. I promised we were gonna be using with we will I promised we were gonna be using dark pigments. And as I promised, here it is. We are using black by not polish. And you better believe this will stain if you don't put a clear layer down. Some pigments, as they get very pigmented, they could be so hard to work with if you don't pick up smaller beads. So I'm going to pick up an arsenal of beads in this area here. Guys, do what you got to do. Dark pigments, especially blacks, green, reds, uh, could be very challenging. Needless to say, oops, needless to say, this one went down a little bit ugly. But we worked it out in the end. If y'all has never been to New Orleans... Y'all are missing a treat. So we got some entourage nail gallery. So now this jar, just before I came online or started videotaping, I actually mixed that jar of gray. So when I was planning what I wanted to do and what colors I wanted to do, I knew I needed gray. But for some reason, I thought I ordered some and the gray that I had was from a different brand and I really wanted this to be like a top heavy, uh, what do you call it, not polish production. And you all know whenever I use, it doesn't matter wh whose nail uh, uh, brand I'm using, I'm going to always use some Entourage Nail Gallery powder. And so I'm using Claire. And this is a mixture that I made, like I said, just before we came on, so that I can have the gray that I needed to put in right in there. And I just made a, a mixture of 50% black and 50% clear.
So it's not something you'll be able to buy. It's, I, like I said, literally just mixed. Not polished black with entourage nail gallery clear. I am making a mess in the jar. So I needed to tilt it to the side so I can pick up the powder. But I managed to get the job done. So right here, the black went down a little bit rough on the top part of the nail. So I'm using the gray to help me fill in and smooth out because it would have been an easier product to work with than the pigmented black. It was a little bit rough on the top part, right? It, especially right where I'm working right now. So that blend of the black and gray that I did, I am going to be repeating that on the pinky. Um, guys, I don't like scary movies and I can hear my husband downstairs watching something that I would not have enjoyed. And so I am actually really enjoying doing my voiceover. I don't know. I don't like movies that will make me not be able to sleep at night. I'm a James Bond girl all day long. Uh, I think... I used to like to watch, what's his name? Ooh, I can see him in my eyes. Um, Wesley Snipes. When he came out with the Blade movies, I was done. I couldn't. There was one, I could remember the first couple of them, I was okay with it. And then he came out with some dragon looking y'all know what i'm talking about blade the movie blade i i was done i think that was the last time i saw what would be considered a horror movie i don't i don't do horror movies i can hear the whatever the drama you know when the music is playing and something exciting is about to happen i can hear it i don't like those type of movies i like to sleep at night Alrighty, so I am going to put down some very irresistible on the thumb as well. Guys, I was telling you, I was enjoying this color. Pick up another bead in the reverse position because I want to build up the middle as well as blend the first bead in with the second bead. And then I'm going to pull it down just like so. And sometimes I can make a beautiful thumbnail and sometimes not for the life of me. 
Can I make a thumbnail look beautiful? This one I would say I did halfway decent on it. So I put a bead down. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm taking my time and finessing that powder into the cuticle without flooding the cuticle. And the more time you take doing that process, it's the more, it's the less work you will have to do when it comes time to hand filing, e filing around the cuticle area. So guys, today, Mondays, I usually don't work on Mondays. I have meetings, Zoom meetings and different things like that. And after my meetings was done, I started cleaning the salon, getting ready for my hosting my Board of Trade. What do you call it? The Board of Trade. Networking event, the last one for the year. Guys, you know, we in the beauty industry has to be extra. So I'm talking about cleaning down shelves, wash the floors, scrub the shampoo bowl area down. Uh, the working area where we actually cut and style here. We got that part of the salon done. And I bought some new towels. And what else did I do? Oh, I started the Christmas decorations in that area, in the front desk and the retail area of the store. So maybe I'll take some pictures and show it to you guys. When I go in tomorrow, we will be finishing all the programs that we're going to be presenting. Um, all the services that we have for new clients and stuff like that. So, your girl is a little bit tired and I'm watching the time that I have to finish this voiceover. And I really wanted to put this movie up, this video up tonight, but I'm not sure if I have another hour of editing in me or voiceover in me. We shall see. So at some point with me laying this job down, I realized that my ring finger was supposed to actually be in the color Royal at Midnight. So I'm in a dilemma right now whether or not I want to actually, what it is I want to do about it. So I decided that I was going to Test to see, I really wanted some color other than just the the very irresistible and the black and gray nail. And as I add, eh, do I want to do that? No, I don't want to do that. Then I stained the nail and I decided, you know what? I'm going to put down the Royal at Midnight thin as if I was putting down a layer of nail polish or gel polish or something like that. I really wanted some color in there. Yes, so here it is. See how thin I'm, I'm applying that? And then I'm going to put a layer of mixed powder over that so that when I file, I don't file away that thin layer of Royal at midnight, but I really needed to fix that boo boo. And of course, on the opposite hand, I was able to do it exactly the way I wanted it to, but I really needed this one to match the opposite side. So, just in case you're wondering why I'm putting it down so thin, I ha I had already built that nail, realizing that oh my gosh, I built the entire nail with the wrong color.
So now looking at it on my hands that the work is finished and everything, the one that I'm putting the Royal at Midnight over the Berry Irresistible is lighter than the left hand where we, we use all Royal at Midnight, but you will have to be eagle eyed and really all up in my Kool-Aid to know that I messed up on the bottom. So here it is, I'm putting some mix over it. And sometimes I don't like to use clay. I like when I'm working with pinks and purples, I like a powder that is sheer pink over it. In this case, I'm using the Entourage Nail Gallery mix, which is a combination of the clear and Pink Panda so that it doesn't look like when the guest turn her hands to the side, you don't see a thick layer of glassy clear on the nail. It It's not appealing to me. And this is so sheer, but that just that much sheer in it makes it makes a huge difference in bridging the gap between the color and the actual top layer of clear that if you try it, you'll see what I'm talking about. And that nail look perfect. Like you would not believe that I messed up on the bottom. Otherwise, I'd have to cut it off, file it down, soak it off, and put another enhancement and start all over. This video would have been 10 hours long. And here on this nail, I'm building it up with Claire. I think this nail, this nail need a reverse speed. Yes, we do. Right about there. Reverse, pull it backwards to make sure it blends in and it fills in even flow. I'm filling in the gap in between here with some gray and it had like a huge indentation in the middle and I'm just trying to make sure that the nail is filled up even thickness from the back tapering down to the front. So that's what we're doing on this nail. Very nicely done. At this point, I was beginning to get excited. I'm like, ooh. You know how you wait for your birthday for an entire year? 
I've waited for these nails for an entire year to be able to wear them this long. And now I'm going to switch to the other hand and I am going to stop right here and pick up this video in the morning. I think I've given today all the energy I have and I really need to shut the work cycle off so I can rest and I will be picking up right here in the morning so y'all don't go anywhere. I will be right back. Okay, guys, like I said, I'm back. It's 5, 16, 17 in the morning, something like that. And I am feeling the stresses of the holidays. It's stressing me out. I can't sleep. I'm tired. I'm working too hard. I feel like I'm underperforming. But I still have to rise and do what it is I have to do to keep pushing. Okay? So, my husband and I are supposed to be going on vacation in two, three days. And I feel like I'm not ready and there's so many things undone. But it is what it is. I'm keeping pushing forward. Okay, so what am I doing here? I, um, I just put down a bead, cuticle bead, and I'm tucking it in nicely. And as you guys remember, on the opposite hand, I had forgotten to put the uh, purple down and I had to put it over the irresistible, very irresistible. So on this hand, I am actually correcting it and putting it down the way I wanted it to. And so, as you can see, the both fingers together, there's a slight color change on the both of them, but... Nothing to seriously be worried about. And I am building up the thickness at the cuticle area, making sure my apex is in the right place. And gently pulling the powder forward. So guys, this is some non-dominant work, hand work here. So... I'm proud of the non-dominant hand work, but you may see me struggle a little bit right here. Not too shabby. I don't know, guys. I I know people talk about the holiday blues. I'm doing so much. It should be exciting. But for some reason, I feel... Maybe I'm just tired. I feel stressed. And all the stuff that I have on my agenda to do when I get on vacation, I'm beginning to feel like I just need to just rest. That's what vacations are for. You know, you're not supposed to work on them, but... We'll see what I do. All right, so I'm looking at them, trying to match up, you know, what I did on the left hand, on the right hand. Pick up a bead of the Berry Irresistible. And I like to I like to say that when I put that bead in, I'm actually really putting the waist in cinching that nail, creating shape from the middle. If you guys know what I mean, on my other videos, you might hear me say, you know, when I put that bead down in the middle where the nail enhancement and my natural nail come together. Where they meet, it's sort of like for me, especially when they're longer, it's like that's the waist. So you want to, I, I know what I'm trying to say. It, it kind of going to be sort of like the middle point of the free edge and the cuticle, but you have that spot in the middle that 
creates shape or whatever. I know what I'm talking about, but I like to, if I get a nice shape when I put that first bead down in the middle, the nail comes together, look like a teardrop. Look like what I used to look like when I was 21. I'm going to have to post one of my throwback, one of my throwback Thursdays, a throwback picture of myself. I have to find a decent one. Yeah, <laughs> I will have to find a decent throwback picture to share with you guys. And I always thought I was fierce. I think I know the one I want to, to share with you guys. If I can find it, I will post it. All right, so I'm doing a little bit reverse bead work here. It looks like I need to build a front of it up. Yep, right there. Otherwise, it would be flat. And, and, um, I had to cut some of that out because my hand was off camera and I'm still trying to keep it off right here. A little bit of a reverse speed work right there to build the thickness up and then pull the rest of the product forward. What are you guys thinking about the shape? And where do you start getting concerned about the shape of your nails? Do you Are you concerned about the shape of the nails? Uh, let's see, when you, are you concerned about the shape when you Hand file the, the tips to blend it in. When do you start working on really perfecting your shape? So when I put my tips down and I blend the natural nail, the tip to the natural nail, and I'm, I start shaping from there. And then when I lay the acrylic down, I am also trying to maintain the shape as much as possible you know, by keeping the sides tucked in, like right here, where I'm tucking the sides in and keeping everything on top the tip. Nothing should be hanging off of the side. Everything should be nice and clean. The more detail I put into keeping the shape throughout the entire process, the better, more aesthetically pleasing the nails look. Right? So when you are learning, sometimes it's hard. I could remember my nail instructor telling me, you know, Carol, you're not just putting the acrylic down. You have to form or you have to shape a nail. Right? So shaping the nail starts a lot earlier than you might actually think. Right from the moment you choose the length and you cut in into the sides or square off the, the tip or however you whatever you plan on making the shape out to be. The moment you add the enhancement to your nail, you should start be thinking about 
maintaining a specific shape throughout the entire process. Down to the moment you put the gel polish on and keeping the side, you know, wiping off the excess product on the side is part of maintaining the shape. So the black on this side, which is very funny, went down so much better than the black on the same finger on the opposite side. Don't ask me why. When I had more control over the product on the other hand, but it went down. It was a little bit lumpy on the left hand. I think by now I started getting the hang of... Black is always challenging, guys. Black, red, and green. I say it all the time. Let's see if I can do it again on this side. I think by now I started to actually... This is the very first time I was actually working with not polish black. And with every powder that you use, you literally have to figure out how the product wants to be worked. And I think by the time I got to the second nail, I had actually figured it out. And I'm blending the black with some gray. Beautiful. So this video is extremely long, so depending on what, if you watch the entire video, some people come in at different points, so I may repeat some of the same information. It's okay. So right here, I'm just filling in the gap in the middle where, like you guys know, I did the, the black to the what's the cuticle and the tip and in the middle i'm just filling that in with some gray now i mixed the gray for usage for tonight and i didn't mix a lot so you're gonna notice i'm having a hard time picking it up and i kept the container flat which is causing me to make a mess in the powder but i will order another jar of nut polish black I pick up one at my local store and I will make a larger container because I really liked the way that came out. And so I would have picked it up a little bit dr drier and filled the middle in. But with the limited powder that I mixed, I was challenged by... how much I had available to finish the job. I had enough, but I should have mixed a little bit more. And I'm also using it, which I figured out I should not have done, because when I look at my nail only in the sunlight would I see the gray in the middle. Instead of encapsulating the whole nail with the gray powder, I should have encapsulated, fill the gray in in the middle and then encapsulate the whole thing with Claire, but you live and you learn how that process works, right? So 
So on this nail here, it was flat. So I'm trying to build up the middle. Pull some of that product backwards. This was a new shape and well, I wear stilettos a lot, but this length of stilettos was brand spanking new for me. I am absolutely enjoying it. What's today? Today's Tuesday morning and I put them on on Sunday. So Monday, Tuesday, yeah, two days. I was surprised at how comfortable I am with the length. Highly recommend it if you, uh, you know, you don't usually wear them when you're on vacation or something. All right, so I'm using Voodoo on a stick. Y'all know that's what I call the not polished hand file. And I'm using the rectangular 100 Zebra. What I like about this file, as opposed to the one that I did on my evaluating my files videos was that the thickness of this file as opposed to the little skinnier ones the traditional ones y'all know i got big hands so i love what i do for the comfort i feel when i'm using it and right here i'm just when you go over the top i'm removed right like just like I'm doing right here, I'm removing bulk and I am shaping the nail. Look, making sure the highs and lows are where they're supposed to be. Also, when you rub the, the hand file, the large surface of the hand file over the top like this, you are hitting a larger surface than your e file can have can hit. At the same at the same time I'm playing with my gels guys so it's if you are having problems with lumpy nails see when I go over the top like that you're hitting the entire surface of the nail with the broad band of this hand file when I go over the top like that you see where you see some of the spots darker and some spots are lighter that's showing on even surface and when i run the hand file over it when i get that total gray out that's when you know okay the, the file has hit all the surfaces on the same level so it's smoothing out the top and anywhere that it's brighter than the grayed out part the file is not hidden that spot just yet so when I go over the top using the broad side of the hand file you're looking to smooth the nail and make sure that nothing is glossy everything is grayed out That's what I'm doing right here, going over the top and making sure if there was any lumps at all. And my work isn't lumpy. It might be uneven. It can still be uneven, but not lumpy. Now, this one that I'm working out on was kind of hella thick because, like you guys know, I had already built the nail and then I put the purple over it because I really wanted that nail to be purple. So, right here, I'm seriously working to keep the nail to not look significantly thicker. And at some point, I got close to rubbing the purple off and I had to kind of stop and be like hey wait a second it's gonna have to be a little bit on the thicker side 
Otherwise, I'll take the purple off. So here it is. I'm working the pinky. And I don't know about you guys. I have the least amount of stability in my pinky finger. So I'm working the opposite hand, doing exactly the same thing I did on the hand before. I think I'm liking what this thumb looks like. It's hard to tell with me. Sometimes I can lay a really beautiful thumbnail. And then there are times I'm like, oh, that's fugly. But yeah, for, for the most part, I'm feeling like I what I intended to do, that I am actually accomplishing it here. Even though at times I thought, and I'm not sure if it's the shape of the nails, they were kind of, what I would say, mm, Maybe I'm just being critical, but I feel like the longer the nails got, that they kind of got, well, they have to get skinny on the ends, but I don't know what I'm trying to say, guys. I know what my eyes see, but I don't know how to say it in words, but I'm not going to be too critical if it's there, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just certain things I observed about the length that that happens when you start um, elongating the nails that there's some aesthetic changes that happens it's the best way i can describe it So you see the shiny spots? That's when I when I hand file and I go over the top, wherever the shiny spots is, that's where I know either the file is not hitting it or it might be uneven. And so I am going to file them. So now let me tell you guys something that I did on this nail and you will eventually notice that I'm going to go back and put some more powder on so i'm gonna to have to file the nails a second time because this was the first time i'm doing it on me i realized that there was a potential to lose the shape if i didn't police up the work right now so i'm policing up my work see at the end of the day it really doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get what you intended. So when I started laying it down, if I'm doing this on somebody else, I have different control than I do on myself. So I am going to buff this out. And then I'm going to go back at it again. I almost forgot that I did that. So we were talking about shaping and when are, are you concerned about shaping and when do you start getting concerned about shaping? I am always concerned about what the ultimate shape or the ultimate goal is. So doing this length on myself for the first time and this particular shape, I just felt like I needed to do the process twice.
So at this point, when I look back at them, I was like, okay, it's flat here. I need more apex there. And plus I needed to put the transfer gel down. So you would definitely need to make sure on the nails that the transfer gel was going down on, that they were smooth enough to transfer the gel evenly. At least that's the logic that I was thinking. I'm, I'm going to put these nails, th this design called for lace, and I didn't actually have fabric lace, so I was going to be putting transfer gel down. So that's one of the reasons why I had to buff the nail out, you know, shape it, make sure the shape was right. And then I actually chose to encapsulate the encapsulate the transfer gel as opposed to just leaving it with a top coat over it. Just something new I was trying. And of course, that particular nail was supposed to be gray. But anywho, moving right along. So I'm transferring the lace. And all that work paid off right here. Because when I transferred it, it transferred exactly the way I wanted it to. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I wanted. So there was a couple other things that I wanted to do. In this particular nail, I was supposed to actually build a, a smile line. And I was so excited about what it is I was doing that I was. it wasn't until I was about to put the transfer gel down, I was like, ugh. You know, you were supposed to make a smile line here. No worries. I'm a nail tech. We get creative. So what I did is I put the transfer gel down as if it was a smile line. And then I'm going to transfer it. Checking to make sure I put the, the transfer foil down on the right side. Transfer it. Right. So, and I am going to repeat that process on the opposite hand. And sometimes I try to rush the process by doing two fingers at the same time. I've learned not to do that. Because once the gel is on your hands, if you touch it, it will transfer. And by the way, guys, I had cured the transfer gel for a minute and a half. Because usually when I do it for a minute, it's not dried enough to like do give me a clean transfer. And there you go. And I learned to do that the hard way. Because sometimes I would cure it for a minute and it, it just wasn't doing a good job. So here it is again. I'm putting it in sort of like putting the gel down sort of like a deep French. Because I forgot to put in the... French on the top. Find a spot after curing for a minute and 30 seconds. So even though you didn't really see me do it, you have to cure for at least 30, 60 seconds. In my case, I have a really old um, LED lamp, light lamp and um, 
transferring isn't did you guys see me put it on the on the wrong side it was upside down so it didn't transfer so i had to do that again and it transferred beautifully So let's see. All right, guys, this is my debut of using the gel liners by Nut Polish. And these came in my kit the day before. I couldn't wait to try it. And the gel liner glides look i'm not sponsored by nut polish so i don't have to tell you that y'all know i use the uh, who is this this is um the nail art gel by i don't know how you say that r-a-r-j-s-m And it's the only kit I knew. That's the only one I had, right? So because, I mean, I have the full lineup of the gels, I never really bought any other gel liners. And these work, these have worked for me perfectly fine. They get the job done. But there is definitely a difference in how the gel glides. And this is using the gel liner from the actual bottle. So I outlined the shape of the, I outlined the shape of the lace on the thumb. And now that I'm doing the voiceover, I realize I should have at least do the same thing on the index fingers. But nonetheless, it is what it is. And so here I'm deciding to go back and fill it in. So originally my intentions was to have fabric. So the nail wasn't built up really thick because if you have the fabric laced, you would have to really go back and encapsulate that. So right now, I am literally going back and trying to make the nail the actual thickness it's supposed to be. Right, so if you if you had an aerial view of the nail, you would see, oh, they're kind of thin, Carol. Yeah, they were, because I knew I was going to go back and encapsulate. And I am actually perfecting this particular style because I have two containers of two containers of the nut polish tips. And one container that my girlfriend gave me from Creations. So I got to sell those nails. So if you can see on the purple nail, it's sort of have a towards a cuticle. Almost like if I took all the powder off, the purple powder. Don't worry about it. It's going to be blinged out so you wouldn't see that shiny spot i know you eagle eye folks out there will see that so yeah so right now i am encapsulating the entire nails to bring them up to the actual thickness that they should be police up your shape carol yep And you can see the grain in the middle. Yeah. 
nicely done. And I am using the Entourage Nail Gallery Clear, a beautifully self-leveling powder. You don't have to be seriously genius at laying acrylic to be able to use it. It is wonderfully self-leveling. I'm just enjoying this as much as you guys <laughs> and observing my technique and stuff like that. So each video is just different when you are working on yourself. I see things that I can improve on. So I'm, that, I'm just an observing as much as you guys are. How much more time we got? Wow. Yeah, so right in the middle here, you can see it's a little bit flat right there. So I have to start working. Imagine if the tip was, if I actually had lace, that lace would add some kind of bulk to the nail, right? And so... I just didn't want them to come out too thick. And I can also, I've never used the lace. I ordered some. But I could only imagine that when you actually put the lace down, you have to kind of fill in the spaces in between the lace kind of and then go over it again. At least that, that's what I'm thinking. When I, when I try it, I would let you guys know what I think about it. So far, I've always been using the transfer foil for the lace. And I'm quite sure it has a different look as well. So if you notice, this is a little bit liquidy when I put it down, when I'm doing the encapsulation, that just helps me to keep the smoothness, right? I hear some of my friends talk about blowing out their wrists, hand filing and stuff like that. I've learned to work smart and not hard. So right here, Come on, Carol, put your hand back on. Yes, right here. We got a nice view, and as much as my hands went off the camera of me tucking clear into the cuticle. So when you're working with clear, sometimes you can flood the cuticle and you don't see it. 
until when it's time to file it, it's like, oh man, I flooded the cuticle. Well, you got a nice view of me not doing that. Y'all pray for me. I'm going to get this cinematography thing down. So the problem is where my camera is at, I don't have a way. I have to keep peeking up to see if I can, if I'm in frame. And sometimes the ring light is so bright in my eyes, I really can't see. So when I look up and I see my hands, I'm not really noticing that I'm off. And believe you me, you wouldn't believe how much editing I did to cut out most of that. Beautiful. I have about twenty three more minutes. And I'm utilizing my hand rest here so that I, I have some control. My hands is not gliding in the air. It reduces the stress on my hand. One of these days, I'll go out and buy one of the fancy hand rest thingies. But for right now, I'm just loving the versatility of this little jar that I'm using. When I'm finished, I can sit it upright and store stuff on the inside. Yes, tuck it in nicely. And then I don't always tuck the, the encapsulated part in the cuticle area because then it makes it thick. And I have to go back and clean that up, if you know what I mean. You kind of want the, you really don't want the cuticle area to be thick. So sometimes I don't take the encapsulation all the way down to the cuticle. It's not necessary, but I obviously did it here, which is only going to make me have to work really hard. And I usually do that if I see some imperfections at the cuticle area. So on that, especially in that pinky one, right in the back there, you can see there was some gaps in the black powder. I'm just using it back there to clean it, to fill those gaps in. And then, of course, I will have to go back and file it out. Reverse bead. Whenever I do a reverse bead, I'm building thickness and blending as well. Nice, nice, nice. Keep your brush clean. And just in case I didn't mention it, those were the signature, Viva signature cloth I'm using. Alrighty, so we're letting these bad boys dry. And I promise you we were going to have to file this again, right? Felt like I should have dried them a little bit more. Guys, I have never done a video for two hours. I don't think anyways. This was painful and I cut so much out of this.
I cut so much out of the video that y'all would not have watched it if I had left all of that stuff in there. I don't know what you would have watched, but I'm just saying. I was like, damn. And that's because I did both hands. I'm doing both hands and I'm doing stuff that I've never done on me before. Mainly working on the length. And the shape. You see how it's rolling up? Yeah, I realized that it wasn't too dry. So I'm going to come back to that. So I'm changing my bit out. What did we go in here with? Pull your hands back. Okay, so I'm using a tornado bit. And I'm going in. Pull your hands back, Carol. And you see me getting into the cuticle area. And trying to make sure that I seal it properly. Placing up the shape right there. Making sure that the nail, just like when you put the tip down. Come on, girl. Get with the program. That you want the, the nail to fit sidewall to sidewall. Really, you need the nail to fit sidewall to sidewall. Or the acrylic to fit sidewall to sidewall. In the cuticle sidewall area you don't want it to be hanging over the sidewalls and the cuticle shut up my phone is going off early in the morning what did i try to email I was emailing I was emailing someone before I went to bed last night and it just now notified me that the email was not delivered I'll call guys I have, guys, I have no peace at 6.07 a.m. oof Alrighty, so we are working the cuticle area here. I'm at 19,000 RPM, so you see me slow down, guys, <laughs> to go around the cuticle. Come on. I know there is a way to videotape and have it be on your monitor at the same time so you can see where if your hands is on screen or off screen i have to figure out how to do that because i believe at this point that is what my issues are being able to see when i go on and off frame so my speed is at 19,000 rpms as you can see on the e-file you do not have to e-file at that speed 10,000 rpms will do it for most people if you have the control of your e-file 
and I probably could have gone a little higher. But because I'm working on the cuticle areas, I would not suggest that. Work at whatever speed is comfortable for you. Nice, nice, nice. And now I'm going to go to the opposite hands. And I earlier in the video, I was talking about operating the e-file at forward and reverse. At this point, I'm actually just let me switch it to reverse because I would have no control over the e-file if I didn't run it in the opposite direction when I switch over. It would be the the file would be jumping off my hands. Even leave, leave in the comment section whether or not you run your e file on forward and reverse. A little something to stabilize my hand. And when I'm working on the cuticle, I'm really looking for space between, I want to be able to see the natural nail, the enhancement, and my cuticle. Clean up that space in between. Otherwise, you could be experiencing some lifting. And God forbid, I'm out of town and I need to work on one of these nails. Mm, and probably take a portable e-file with me. And a little bit of powder. Y'all know when I go over the top what I'm doing. At this point, I was getting impatient with myself. I'm tired. Sunday, it was rainy here in Maryland. And I slept for most of the day. Yes, guys. And um, then I was like, you know what? I should get my nails and I should shoot this on a video. And I had no intentions to do it for as long as it took. But the hand filing part and getting the nail into perfect shape... Is the hardest part sometimes you know if you don't spend enough time doing this are you really doing it at all you know I'm telling you I'm we, we're gonna get to New Orleans and all this work that I plan on doing there, I just feel like I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just done. I'm tired. I 
I could have definitely worked at some more. Yeah, I can see a little hangover. Yo, I'm running this e-file at 19,000 RPMs and I'm looking at it right now and it looks like the, I'm not even doing anything. But it's 15 at that point. But, oof, that's a lot of speed. So right here, I'm buffing the surface of the nail as well as the cuticle sometimes it's scary working the cuticle area with the e-file but if it's not too thick and you don't have a whole lot of work to work on in the back a good buffing around right here will smooth out any issues you have And the cuticle area, if you've done everything else you were supposed to do in that area. So I was laying in bed scrolling. And guys, you need to tell your friends and your loved ones how much you care about them, how much you love them. Someone who I went to church with in Boston, she's now married, has one, two, three boys. And she's, I believe, a city council member. Where are in Massachusetts? She resides right now. But in any event, they were sleeping. And the tree, a tree fell on their house. And she said her husband heard the tree falling. Like, I guess it makes a sound when the tree is falling. And he got up and she was on the right side of the bed and the, the tree crashed in on the left side. The, the family's okay. Everybody's fine. But, you know, this is the holiday times and this is the time when, when you lose someone to either an accident or even natural causes. At this time of the year, it just hurts a lot. So it just really made me realize that. And I tell people I love them all the time. I punctuate every conversation with anybody I'm talking to on the phone and say, hey, girl, I love you. I love my family. I love my cousins. I let them know that. And I, you just can't say that enough at this time of year. Let people know that you love them and you care about them. Y'all know I love that buffin too. That'll smooth some nails out. You have to put the work in the ooh-wee. Look at them bad boys. So right here, guys, I'm just drawing. Like you can see, I got sick and tired of the video. And I was like, look, I got to get this done. So we went from buffing to bam, glossed over, right? And they're looking, they're looking good. These are the first time I am drawing roses. On my nails with the gel art brush. Mm, I think I like it. And then I'm going to sugar them with some clear. And dry them for 60 seconds. Yeah, you know I love to make a mess. I know you really can't tell what it is I'm doing right here. I'm just drawing some semicircles around each other and making a rose. After I did them, I was like, you know, I should have made those roses purple, black and purple. It might have been really cute, but it gave texture to that nail.
And I'm just going to do the pinky at the same time. I'm feeling them, guys. What do you think? Would you wear your nails that long? Do you wear your nails that long? What are some of the challenges you have wearing them that long? I actually felt like these nails were so comfortable to wear. It's I'm not sure why. They're so comfortable, but I'm liking it. In comes Entourage Nail Gallery Claire, and we're just going to texturize those nails. Guys, I wasn't ready. Get it together, girl. Yeah, I was looking for that little thing. And there you have it. I did bling him out. I put some bling on it. OMG. OMG. I think they came out really cute. It was my first attempt at this particular style. And I am following. I'm getting inspiration. Y'all know me. I get inspiration from everywhere. And I hope I did those nails justice. But I am going to wear the she-h-i-t out of those nails. Mm. I went down to, downstairs. You know, my husband is down there watching his movies. And I'm like, hello, bitches. Ooh, beautiful. What do you guys think? Comment in the description, in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. But I am feeling these nails. I am feeling it. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hope I can keep my eyes on the road while I'm driving. And not try to kill myself and others because I think I'm saying something. Right, guys? I will definitely do these again. I hope you absolutely, absolutely enjoy watching me work these nails tonight. And I feel like I can improve on my application and stuff like that. But girl, we're going to do that together. We're going to work that together. Like I said, when, when I was coming up, we didn't have all this stuff. And it's so exciting. And yay. Does that certification or what? Nicely done. Enjoy and have a great day. Thank you for watching.